Hello and welcome to the Fit for Privacy podcast. In this podcast, we talk to influencers so that you learn from the best. I'm your host Puneet Bhatia. I help business and privacy leaders to create and deliver strategies for privacy compliance and trainings. Before we start, a quick reminder that the opinions and ideas shared in this context are not legal advice. If you need advice, you should contact a professional with your specific context. So let's get started. Today in the fit for privacy podcast we have a very special guest that is ram kumar ramachandran he is the owner of accention corporation he started his journey as a software guy and right now he advises clients with audit consulting and training on information security and privacy so ram welcome to the show thank you balak so ram you have had such an interesting journey over so many decades Tell us something about how you ended up with privacy and information security. Sure, Pune. Um, to be uh, uh, honest, uh, uh, privacy was an accident uh, in my career. Let me tell how it all started. Uh, okay, my career, as I told, uh, I was more a software programmer at the start of my career. I have been into various responsibilities. in software delivery i have been a programmer i have been a lead i have been a project manager i have been a software delivery head and all that and um, when i joined kpmg i accidentally got into info security audits uh, kpmg india was starting the practice of in isms audit in, in the country where we got trained by the uk uh, counterpart of kpmg and i was the first person in india to do the infosec audit which was the bs7799 those days hmm. so the first audit for india was on, on the kpmg was done by me and uh, there was no looking back uh, i came by accident and stayed by choice and uh, i have been watching the space for quite long and when when the gdpr thing first started now i became a bit curious about what all this okay i knew that it was a subset of info security mm-hmm. and i was wondering you know why is the world talking about it so much and uh, then i took myself for whatever reasons a certification in gdpr uh, and uh, from there i started writing articles in linkedin on very gdpr nice. mm-hmm. then it became very interesting people are so interested about the topic uh, and then i stayed by choice now my profession has become predominantly info security with data privacy as you told doing consulting training and my audits that's very about nice. me very nice and now within in, with the so many new laws coming up in us and the personal data protection bill coming in india i'm pretty sure you'll stay busy for quite a few years <laughs> thank you punit yeah <laughs> now these are the things which keep us busy but yeah. if i may ask you uh what, how do you uh, basically define privacy in one line i know it's very complicated we make life out of it and we can talk about it for days hours and weeks but True. if you had to put privacy in one line what would that be See, privacy for the individual is the independence to do what they want to do without being bothered without being in, you know interrupted without being you know poked upon uh, and all that so the the, the freedom that it gives the individual is what is the most precious thing a person can get so that's about privacy for individual very interesting so privacy is the freedom for individuals to do what they want to do that's a very interesting right. definition really like it i think uh, it'll be very useful for our audiences and now when it comes to privacy implementation the last chat we had uh, last time we were talking about uh, putting things simply and practically for customers and that's what we both pride in i mean you and me we both believe in putting it simple putting it uh, optimal rather than scaring people yeah. and yeah, yeah. creating a culture of privacy tell me something about it how do you go about it in your work see what i have seen um, are few horror stories uh, of uh, privacy system implementation which actually uh, trigger a lot of thoughts in me um i first tell my clients uh, understand the not the data but understand the business flow 
in the organization. Okay, don't try to capture data. I have my employee data here, customer data there, you know, test data here, vendor data here and all that. Don't go by data, go by the flow of the business. Okay, it is it could be like you know, cold calling, you know, marketing is a process. So capture the process and in that process tell what is the data you hold, what is the data you're capturing. Okay. And that's a better way of capturing the data that you got in the organization than trying to see data in silos. This is one of the anti-patterns I've been seeing. People tell, I have so much of data here, don't get it there and all that. I always felt, understand the business flow and within the business flow, try to see what is the data you're capturing. That's a better way. That's one of the key things which I educate my customers. Very nice. And I think I follow you because oh. that's... <laughs> How I pr proceed also, you don't need yeah. to start with data. You don't need to start thinking of privacy and so on. You need yeah. to start with what are you doing on your business? And in those steps, in those processes, as you are doing those things, think about who are you getting in touch with and what are you capturing? So that's a very nice way of formulating. So if you do that, are there any challenges you face or what according to you is the most challenging aspect in privacy implementation? Uh, I have one word to tell about the oh. challenges. Yeah, you know what? Landmine. <laughs> Landmine? What is that? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> people, uh, there are times when people don't know what damage a uh, violation can make to their organization. Um, I can't quote examples, but in uh, some of uh, the US customers' data, is being processed by some of I mean, many people in here. One of them, whom I am consulting for, tell them that just the individual, uh, and they do for both Europe and US geography, mm -hmm. just the individual in Europe know that there is a guy sitting here in India accessing their data and, and processing data. Just the individual know, okay, because a lot of interfaces. There's a European counterpart, there's an American counterpart, then the Indian operations and all that. So my question is to the Indian operation, do the person in Europe or in the US know that their data is processed by an individual here in India? If that is not known and you're processing the data without their knowledge, then this could trigger a lot of things later and it could be a class suit and the damage could be huge. Okay, the appreciation for, for such a risk sometimes is very very low okay and this is a big challenge so sometimes they feel uh, data privacy is a checklist affair you tell okay you have access control you have your network <laughs> no it is you can tell you now i comply but that's not the case making them understand is the real challenge for me here hmm very very unique i've never heard that uh, the biggest challenge in privacy is landmines yeah, well, I do get it. Anywhere, everywhere you go in an organization, there are blocks, there are pieces, there are actions, there are activities which people don't understand. There is a privacy implication. And I, you're right. I mean, quite often when I talk to my clients, it's the same thing. They say, we have a system here, but somebody in outside the country and usually India, they are accessing data. But the system is here, so they don't get any data, so there's no processing. And I tell them, guys... When somebody reads data from another country, it is transfer of data. So you exactly. need to have mechanisms in place to secure it. Sure. And let me ask, uh, move to another dimension because we are talking about the uh, challenges. Some people yeah. I consistently hear, especially in Europe, that they're saying privacy or GDPR is anti-marketing. While of course uh, it's not true, but in your region, especially when you are in India and the privacy law is still being, how should I say, formulated or finalized, how is it being viewed, privacy or GDPR and also the other customers you are tackling or working with? Yeah, I can tell how it is viewed, uh, I mean both. I'll tell how it is viewed as in my perspective yeah. of that. Uh, the way it is viewed uh, is as a big hassle, no doubt about that. People, uh, uh, many of my clients who do, uh, you know, randomly buy database and call the customers or prospective customers are now uh, facing a lot of hassle. Uh, and uh, this 
control is something which they don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, that is their perspective. You now they ask me, Mom, what should I do? You know, I have to have some <laughs> starting point. So I call them and then try to take the thing. But you know, I'm I'm being told I can't do a call to one someone you know whom I don't know. So what do I do? Okay. But my perspective has always been um, the abuse of the individuals by cold call has to come down at some point in time. Even in India, within India, the PD people is going to do a lot of goodness for the individuals who get calls, you know, a dime a dozen, okay, you know, so many things. You know, I, you don't even know where all your, your data is available, to how, many, how many people. You get suddenly cold calls the entire day for so many things. Definitely, it has to stop. Data privacy bill is going to bring in a lot of discipline amongst us. I'm sure they are not stopping the marketing activity. They are trying to streamline them. That is my perspective. Definitely, it will be a hassle for the marketing folks to start with. But the genuine ones who offer good services, which is going to help the customer, will sustain over a period of time. No doubt about it. Only the people who want to somehow force your thought into the individual will fail. That's for sure. And this is a good thing happening for individuals. Yes, it is a, it's a hassle to start for marketing, but that will die down over a period of time and it become a way of life. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's a culture change. It's a cultural shift. So far, for so many years or centuries, companies have been used to collecting data without yeah. any bottlenecks, without any rules. And now, all of a sudden, we are asking them to follow the rules, not to collect and collect <laughs> with consent. And that's where I think... It, People do get anxious, but if you look at the long-term perspective, you cannot have it free flow of uh, this. I don't know if it will get into monetization of data. Maybe tomorrow, Facebook or somebody else comes in and saying, give me 100 euros or $100 and I'll do this with your data. Allow me if that the direction it goes or maybe more controlled, more sophisticated consent-based mechanisms. We don't know how it will shape up, but there needs to be some change. It can't be free... uh, or how, I mean, it can't be in old days wherein anybody can do every anything with data. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I mostly we talk about privacy as compliance with the law and so on, but there's a big human factor into it. And as you're saying, people view it as uh, hassle. So how do you manage this human factor? Because it's a perception thing. It's a it's quite challenging to tell somebody that you should stop doing what they are doing and do things very differently. Like you call, uh, talk about call, call, uh, sorry, you talk about cold calls. It's a, sometimes a tongue twister. So when you are doing cold calls, uh, yes, I know I've been in India and I, it's a lot of cold calls during the day. Yeah. Thankfully here, I don't get, I think maybe once a month, one cold call or maybe once a quarter from India, somehow, somewhere they get my number and then they call me. (laughs) But how do you manage this challenge of managing privacy with clients? Because it's a human thing. Unless and until they are convinced, they will not act. True. True. See, uh, for me, uh, on the the human side of it, uh, it is going to do a lot of goodness for the individual, as I told them. No, it is good for them. Probably... um, the, the callers who are doing the random calling of people is going to be hit. Okay. So, uh, as such, the privacy is going to increase for the individual, which will be uh, the world of good for the individual. Okay. All, all the bothering that was done earlier wouldn't be there now. So, uh, that way, but uh, uh, there are some cultural issues as well. Uh, if you take India, uh, culturally, uh, Indians love to be called in a way. Okay, that you should, you know, <laughs> seriously. No, they get the importance. Um, somewhere, if if the entire thing is stopped, no, they'll be wondering. Oh my God, well, am I am I not an important guy in the society? Oh, no calls for me. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> seriously, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so balance. That's very fun, uh, interesting or funny also. <laughs> the people love to be called. And if I look at it, that metric, I think yeah. it will be challenging for me if I put that metric on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But I see there are some very interesting calls. Sometimes I, uh, I mean, when I was in India last time, I somebody got a call. It was very funny and very uh, exciting as well. He said, 
Sir, oh, you have been shortlisted for a special insurance. Would you like to opt for it? And he started all the benefits and everything. And I said, by the way, when did I ask? And how did you shortlist? <laughs> so, <laughs> it becomes very, uh, very interesting conversation sometimes. But yes, they are intrusive for sure. I'm hearing another thing. I'm going to tell this. Uh, when I ask my clients, okay, or some of them, how they make the call these days to the European prospects, uh, sometimes I get some strange answer where people tell the first call they make actually, they start with the uh, uh, you know uh, term telling. Uh, last time when I called you, you asked me to contact now. Where is the last thing? It's the first call. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting away with it? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Till now, I didn't hear any horror stories. But this can be sustained. Can yeah, yeah it can't be. It can't be. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a funny story. I, I mean, it happened here also. I was thinking of making a complaint. So I set up uh -huh. my company a few months ago. Okay. And a few days later, I get a bill to pay directly. So uh, the bill was in uh, Dutch. So... And my understanding of Dutch is, uh, I would say, decent. So I was like, hmm, how come I have not even set up a company for two weeks or three weeks? And I already started getting bills. There's no revenue and already expenses start. <laughs> and then I said, okay, let me think. What is it? Because I was almost about to pay, started my phone bank app and read it. And I see you have subscribed for a website. Oh. And then I read it properly and it says, as you have set up a company, we thought you would like to set up a website. So we've mm -hmm. reserved a domain for you for four weeks. And here is the payment bill. <laughs> so it was very inclusive. Uh, I almost thought of putting it on LinkedIn and everywhere. And this was an American company, by the way. So working oh. here, putting up uh, an office, sending me an email in Dutch. And of course, once you register your company, some of your data is public. But yeah. that doesn't mean you'll take it and offer me. I mean, or don't send me a bill. Offer me that you can do me a website. But it was a bill, full exact account number and reference number. And if I don't read it, I would have just paid it because in early days, you know, you say, oh, there's a bill from government, I must pay. <laughs> so it does happen sometimes. But it was funnily uh, very uh, different for me, different experience. And now another human aspect that we struggle with is because... For us, privacy is our business and security is our, uh, for you also is your business. But there's so much information. I was last time reading uh, some guidance and I was like, so many laws or so much information. And I said, no, I'm not going to read it today because every day you get so much. So how do you stay yeah. up to date, stay prioritize your day-to-day -day actions? Because one hand, we have to manage clients. Second, there's of course all other activities. And third, we need to stay relevant stay in the market so how do you yeah. manage that so, uh, there are two aspects to it one uh, i ensure that uh, i know all the critical ones by being connected to various forums uh, for enriching my own knowledge so i ensure that uh, you know I, I go to various forums to understand the developments uh, but there is one more thing uh, happening uh, uh, now in India as well, which is uh, uh, there are service providers coming up, uh, uh, giving services as, as a SaaS solution for all the legal compliance. Hmm. So there are entities here where they have an online subscription based thing. I recommend that to my client where everything is managed online under, under uh, cloud solution. So that all that they do is against those applicable laws, what are they doing, how much are they doing. And then we comply, not comply, we not comply, what's action taken, all that stuff. So, Interesting. Uh, but part of it is my responsibility. I also depend on these service providers who uh, have the enriched knowledge about all the new coming up legal requirements. Yeah, it's not easy, but yes, uh, if you have one of the service providers or pro subscribers who are going to give you this information on a regular basis, it just, it does help. And also some of the groups on social media are very useful. Yeah. I mean, because it's two-way street. One, you need to share updates with your clients and your audiences. But on the other hand, you need to consume. Because if you don't yeah. consume, you don't, uh, you're not able to produce it. So, and if I may ask, how much time on an average in a week or a month do you spend on this activity? 
if it's okay to ask because our audience or uh, yeah. uh, listeners would be really interested how much time do we spend see uh, definitely uh, this is our bread and butter so uh, and these are the arms ammunition we should have to have you know to keep ourselves well so uh, uh, every day i can tell the minimum time the maximum depends on what's <laughs> happening in the market minimum of one hour i spend on these things uh, i mean to be more than that at times required but this is the minimum yeah i think that, that that's a fair number very close to where i am also but right. the whole challenge is when you start to measure it there's so many uh-huh. interventions during the day because you are on linkedin group facebook group yeah. because of these notifications so it's also <laughs> difficult to quantify that time sometimes true 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 okay uh, that's uh, interesting and maybe if i may ask for us privacy is normal and sometimes we are like almost paranoid about privacy don't do this don't do that but how do others feel especially those who are around you your relatives your customers or your family and friends who are not into privacy how do they see it and do they see it interesting or do they see it as one another see, click at the start anything that is disciplined is uh, uh, resisted okay <laughs> no one <laughs> want disciplining okay so uh, at the start it, it, it it's a, a challenge no doubt but uh, uh, only when they understand how they will benefit out of this then the maturing happens else at the start of it you know it, it is more you know why do you put these constraints why should you not do these things why can't they put those things okay so uh, privacy is not appreciated at the start okay only either they hear about horror stories from others or they are able to see themselves at times okay only then the disciplining happens then they mature mm-hmm. so uh, unless you are into the subject um, they don't see the importance of it that's how it starts and then only with the experience they mature right but uh, is there a lot of uh, med- I-, i know there's a lot of media attention because media always needs in india something yeah. or the other of, as a story so pdpb does have attention but is general public also talking about it the privacy or privacy laws uh, see at the general public level it is not that popular it, see what at least i am doing on my side is that i am trying to educate uh, the boards okay uh, the governing boards about this important in fact i i had i was in a conclave in sir darkness iod as you call in india mm-hmm. uh, they had a conclave where i talked about data privacy so i i want the awareness board to come at the uh, the top level so it percolates on effectively but to answer your question the awareness at the general public level is very very limited very very limited yeah so general public it's very limited but at corporate level the conversations yeah. have started yes it has started yeah that's interesting and, that's how it goes it's yeah, early it, days but uh, if conversations have started that means it will start to be on agenda and we don't know yeah. when this law would be passed i mean hopefully that's sometime this year or this session yeah, yeah. I, the awareness became more sharper when i told about the penalties and when i told <laughs> there could be there could be a jailing of people which is a non bailable offense <laughs> yeah that does ring a bell though i yeah, i think uh, scaring is one part of it yeah. and educating so if you're using fines to educate them that's always good yeah <laughs> though i don't like to scare people with fines yeah. but yes sometimes when they don't listen fines are a means to get some attention <laughs> tell them the language base they understand well that's true i mean most ceos or cfos they when you put a number to it or a consequence to it in terms uh-huh. of risk then yeah. the attention span changes this is true yeah because otherwise if you keep talking about data and privacy and freedom and all that sometimes the attention doesn't Yeah. come through or not exactly. as much as we need true very true right so overall i mean i think we i'm done with whatever i had to ask you but if you had to pass one message to our audiences 
yeah. about privacy or data privacy or all the conversation we had. I know we had a lot of uh, interesting uh, discussions about starting with a business flow or there being landmines on the way or privacy sometimes is viewed as a hassle, especially by clients or abusing by cold calls and so on. So there are a lot of interesting touch point conversation through the show. But if you were to pass one message, what would that be? Uh, one, one message which I want to make loud and clear is that, uh, let's be clear that data privacy is here to stay. Okay, let us not uh, think that because of the initial hassle it's creating, maybe it will be diluted or will be stopped and all that. Globally, data privacy is here to stay. Every, every country, every state is trying to get one on its own. So it is going to be here and probably going to become tougher by the days. So let us be ready for it. And uh, no, let us not have any uh, wrong assumptions of this will not be applicable for me. Maybe it should be diluted and all that stuff. Let's know that data privacy is in and here to stay for longer, forever if not. That's very powerful. It reminded me of title of my book, Be Ready for GDPR. Be ready for privacy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. I mean, privacy is here to stay. It may change shape or form, but end of the day, there would be more value, more uh, uh, priority attached, importance attached to personal data of people. It will not be, it's there, just take it. So Ram, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you like this effort. Please do click like, comment and share. It is okay if you did not like it. Please still do make a comment and share with us what we can improve. If you have suggestions, ideas for guests or you want to have your question answered, please email me. My email is info at punitbhatia.com you can also share this with others and if you do so while tagging me in i will personally thank and acknowledge your contribution in coming episodes thanks once more and look forward to seeing you back till then stay safe stay blessed and stay happy